All right, hey everybody. Um, in this video, I'm gonna go over patching on the HD96. So again, I'm using the offline editor for this. So we can think of it as you're building a show before you get to the console. Um, but overall, it's gonna react very similar to how it would be on the console for uh, minus just a few things, which we'll go over. So uh, first thing we're gonna do is navigate over to patching. We can do that on the top toolbar here. There's a the patching. Uh, as well as if we push menu over on the right hand side patching right here as well. So we get to patching and um, if I collapse all of these, so we'll kind of go into the scheme of patching and then we'll get into kind of a specific scenario. So right away patching is locked. So there's this red button locked here. So when you see these red lines, it means that I can't patch anything. It will prevent me from doing that. Now, if I unlock that, now I can make those patches. So the way it works in the HD, uh, similar to how it was in the Pro Series range by Midas, is that there is a from side and a to side. So the left-hand side is from somewhere, and the right side is where it's going, so where it's going to. So let's say that we want to have um, our system is going to be two DL231 splitter boxes. So, um, and then as well as um, CM1 cards, we're going to outfit that with a USB card for virtual sound check and recording. And then there's also a Dante card in there for another purpose. So, first, what I'm going to do is under external, there's add new device. So, if I tap add new device, uh, if I know what the stage boxes are, I can just go ahead and select it. So in this case, because we're building it offline, I will need to tell it what it's going to be because auto detect here, which is a really cool feature, uh, it's not going to work on an offline editor because there's nothing connected. But if I was at the desk, I had IO connected. If I hit auto detect, then it would just detect the stage box and automatically uh, configure that. So a really cool feature. Um, another thing to kind of just mentioned here is this is all of the available IO for the HD. So if you don't see a stage box here, it doesn't mean that, or it means that it doesn't work with the HD. So, um, you know, DL16, DL32, those stage boxes that are geared for our 48K platforms for M32, Wing, X32, they're not going to be compatible with the HD. It needs to be the blue boxes. So um, in this case, we're going to, Pardon me, we're gonna load in two DL231s. So load one in right there, and we're gonna go do the same thing. Put another one in there. And because they're not physically connected, we have to um, manually uh, patch this, manually configure it. So the first thing, um, especially with the 231, the question is, is okay, do we wanna run redundancy or not? So if we're connecting to the four local ports, so the four local AES-50 ports on the rear of the desk, we can actually run these in redundant mode. Um, but in order to do that, we need to make a change in preferences. So I think we're gonna do that. Um, so I'll show you where do we, we go to do that. So we go to patching, excuse me, go to menu, preferences, DSP configuration. And you'll see that you know some of these areas are, are blocked out um, simply because it's an offline editor. But if we go to DSP configuration, under redundancy, we're going to turn on local AES-50. So by turning that on and going back to patching, now we can configure these DL-231s in redundant mode. So I'm going to select the first one. I'm going to unlock. I'm going to make sure that edit is selected so I can edit it. And port number is just going to be 1. And you'll, you'll see how 2 and 4 are, are red. It means you can't actually assign it. Uh, and that's because it's looking for that redundant line. So if I have both connected, so um, I have the X and Y of one side of the 231 connected, then that will be fine there. And now if I go to the other one and it chooses to be port three, I would still physically connect the Y connection uh, to port four. Um, but in this case, because we're redundant, we're not looking at those two ports. Uh, so right now we're going to assume that they are configured correctly um, based what we're seeing here. So two 231s and 
Now let's uh, configure the CM1 card slot. So to do that, we're gonna go back to the menu. And on this right hand side, we're gonna go down to expansion cards. So here, if we were at the desk, um, it would just detect the card automatically. So again, offline editor, we're doing this before we get to the show, before we get to the desk. If we choose manual, I can go, okay, in module one, it's gonna be a USB port, uh, USB card. And we want the sample rate to be 48K. Uh, these have sample rate conversion in them. So I can take a 48K session of tracks and it will upsample it to 96K once it reaches the desk. So by doing this, we're gaining uh, double the channel count. So we can do 48 channels at 48K using the KT USB card. And on this second card here, let's throw in Dante. So Dante, same thing. Uh, 48k I can actually get 64 channels and at 96 it would be halved to 32 so for a virtual sound check um, in the Stancy card no real use at the moment but we have it in there so we'll just have it configured so that is done we can go back to patching up here or we can just go to the back to uh, go to patching button directly here now that we've done that now we can see that the both CM1 slots uh, actually have uh, connections to be patched or patch points available to them. So if I unlock that, um, let's see, the first thing we want to patch is going to be just the 231 IO. So that is a 24 channel stage box with two splits. But as it's just reaching this desk, um, we're seeing 24 channels. Uh, so we're going to take those and I can I can choose them to patch. I can just select them individually. Or if I grab this you know, input one and press and hold, I can select all 24 at the same time. And if I go to, let's say internal here, inputs, I can patch to input one, and now it'll patch one to one, one through 24 to channels one through 24. On the second deal for 231, I'll do the same thing and go to 25 through 48. So now we've just patched 48 channels from two stage boxes to our input channels. So pretty simple. Um, okay, let's say that we're gonna do virtual sound check as well. So we're gonna do that over USB so I can hover over the CM1 USB card. And if I do the same thing and take all of the outputs there, so it is selecting all 48, um, I can bring this into the tape returns. So if I bring them into the tape returns, channels one through 48, um, it's as easy as uh, press and holding this virtual sound to flip those inputs back and forth. So, um, you know, about to do virtual sound check. If I just press and hold this here, it goes yellow. So now we are, have engaged the tape returns. So if you have channels playing from tracks live, et cetera, They'll be coming out of channels one through 24. And now the band's on stage, you're ready. You can get out of virtual sound check and that will flip the inputs back to the standard inputs being sourced from the stage boxes. Now let's do outputs. So if we go to internal, you'll see buses, direct outs, monitor outs, insert sends and shout mix outs. So buses is gonna be just the outputs of the desk. So we'll see all 96 of our auxes. We'll see our 24 matrices as well as the left, right, and mono. So depending on where we're gonna pick those signals from, uh, for this example, I think we'll just use matrix one, two, three, and four for like a front of house patch. And we can go to external and maybe we'll use the first 231 for those outputs and just patch matrix one, two, three, and four directly to the stage box, TL231, one through four. Um, if we're gonna do, say, monitors from front of house, I could easily go to uh, over here and let's just, oops, maybe choose uh, the first, say 24 auxes. Maybe we're doing stereo IMs or a mix between, you know, eight stereo IMs and wedges. But anyway, I can take 24 of these auxes go to the second DL32, and now send them all right over there. So now those 24 outs from the auxes are showing up at the stage box. So 
So we've now patched our inputs to outputs. Um, you still have access to direct outs, your monitor outs. So if you need to patch them to wedges or anything, you can do them right, right here. Insert sends. So this is very much like how pro series patching worked where let's say you wanted to put an insert on uh, say channel one. You need to go to your insert send channel one, go to whichever effects rack that you had. So if we were doing just an internal effect, so effects rack one, I would go from there, I'd patch into that and then come out of that effects rack back into the insert return on that same channel. So we've made that much easier now uh, and I'm actually just gonna go over to say channel view to show you just to do an insert um, patch. So right now we're on channel one. It's as easy as going to the effects for inserts, tapping add. You can choose any of these, but we'll just go to the first one here and maybe on channel one, what do we wanna put on? Dynamic. Um, maybe we'll throw on an M6 or maybe a distressor. So as soon as we've done that, now that has been patched and um, took no time at all to do that. And it would have been the same thing to accomplish that is to do, you know, insert send one to the effect slot one out of that effect slot back into the insert return. So we've now just made that patch um, via the channel and we didn't have to do it in the patching page, but you still can. Um, Overall, that is kind of just how patching works. Uh, we have several different patch points. Um, you can double patch. You can do several things. I'm trying to think of just uh, anything else to kind of mention here, but um, overall, that is how patching works. You have a from side and a to side, and you can just treat it like a patch bay and everything will get patched. So if you have any other questions, uh, please let me know, but um, until next time, thanks.